Hey guys, today I'm doing a lesson on five ways that you can use stock images in your reading lessons. So I had a company, graphicstock.com, that reached out to me and wanted to do a partnership to share with my viewers on what it is that they have to offer. Typically, I don't get super excited when companies um, send me things only because I get really nervous. I want to make sure that I am sharing things that I am very secure and I feel really passionate about and I would pretty much use it every day in my own classroom. Uh, when this company reached out to me, I was jumping for joy because I absolutely love using stock photos in my classroom. So graphicstock.com is offering a phenomenal special that I encourage all of you to go out and absolutely try. If you go to www.graphicstock.com forward slash holidays, you will get $50 off of your annual membership. The annual membership typically runs $99, so $50 off of $99, and you get it for a whole year. There's no type of limit of how many images that you can download. It's unlimited, so you can download as much as you want and you keep them for good. So this is a fantastic deal, and I am so excited to share with you, all of you how you can use these within your very own classroom. So let's jump right into it. One of the very first ways that I've used graphic photos in my classroom is I've captured pictures that I felt like had a lot of things that you could talk about, things that you can really infer with. And I would post them up on my projector, your smart board, whatever it is that you have in your classroom. And this was typically during the morning or I did it even in kindergarten, I think during my writing time as well. And I would post it up and I said, okay, I want you to really think about what is happening in the picture. And so they would start to talk and they were telling me things that they were noticing, but then we also started inferring things. So I would say, well, what do you infer about this lady? What do you already know in this picture? What do you see? Well, that she has her head down and she's holding her head. Well, why do some people do that? And so they were telling me all of their background knowledge of reasons why they were holding their head. Then I had other kids that would notice, oh, wait a second, it looks like she has medicine on her dresser. Well, what are some reasons that you would have medicine? So you can use this for inferencing to really get those kids discussing things. This is gonna be the very first way that I've used them before, to get kids really talking about pictures and what they're noticing inside of pictures and really having them think outside of the box and connecting their schema to what it is that the, the text or the picture is already telling them. If you wanted to expand on this, you could have an anchor chart, have your kids write it on sticky notes, place them up on the anchor chart, chart as they're coming in in the morning, you could even have them sit down and write about some of the observations that they're making. So now this brings me into the second way that I use stock images in the classroom. So the second way that I use it is to go along with an adjectives lesson. So I would read a book on adjectives and then I would have kids describe what it is that they were seeing that was happening in the picture. But I would want them to use words that described the shape, words that described the size, words that described how things felt. So really bringing a lot of those five senses into play. So for kindergarten, this was pretty basic and it was, I see a big dog jumping. I see a blue ocean. I see a family wearing white. So things that were very, very basic, but that was also really great for kindergarten. If you were taking it a little bit further, you could do this in the upper grades as well, but really having them go into more depth. I see the tall dad holding his daughter's hand in a white clothes, you know, reaching his arm out as he plays with his dog. Just that's giving more description where kids are so used to just giving very basic sentences. So you could definitely just take a picture, put it on paper or have them just paste it inside of their journals and then they could write sentences to describe what is it that's happening and what are they seeing inside of that picture. The third way that I would use graphic stock photos in the classroom is to have pictures and then write out very simple sentences. 
In kindergarten and first grade, it was really important that students understand how to match the pictures and the words together. They were finding that both of them go hand in hand. So I would write out simple sentences onto um, any type of paper and then I would cut them up. I could put it onto um, sentence strips and I would cut those up and then I would have pictures out. And that's what we would do. We would just build sentences that went along with those pictures. And then we would match those sentences that would go along. So I may have about four or five of different of these and they would have to go through, read the sentence, and be able to match it. That is a ton of skills that they're using. They're having to use their sight words, their decoding words, they are um, making sure that they're understanding yet what is the text saying, and then they're matching it to that exact same picture. The fourth way that I use graphic stock photos in the classroom is to have a picture and have students create a story based on that picture. So I did it in kindergarten and it was a little bit harder, but for my my higher level students, this was something that was really good for them because it really challenged them and had them thinking about what was happening in the story. For my, my upper grade, fourth grade, they're doing the exact same thing where I'm giving them a picture and they're having to create a fictional narrative based on the picture that they are seeing. So using graphic pictures to be able to have students create some type of a fictional story is actually really challenging. They're brainstorming the picture. They're having to make sure that they're using a clear beginning, middle and end. In fourth grade, we have a, you know, we have a hook and we have a closing sentence. So there's a lot of skills that they're taking in place when they are trying to write a story for a graphic stock photo. The very last way that I use graphic stock photos in the classroom is to teach point of view. And what I would do is I had pictures where I would put an arrow to a certain person. In this case, the arrow is pointing to the dad that's looking down at the baby. I would then have the students talk about, well, what is the point of view of this, this, this person in this picture? I would have maybe some sentences that they would have to sort, whether it's first person, um, third person limited, third person omniscient, omniscient, omniscient. <laughs> Um, I can never say that word right. Third person omniscient, third person limited omniscient. So what I would do is I gave them a picture and in the picture I just drew kind of an arrow using the shapes images in PowerPoint and then I would print those out. You could go ahead and have some that are pre-written sentences that students would have to sort based on the person that's in that stock image. Then you could have them sort it, whether it's first person, third person limited, third person objective, and third person omniscient. So once they had those sorted, then you could even really challenge them and say, well, now I'm gonna give you a picture and I want you to create sentences that shows that it is first person, that it is third person limited, that it's third person objective. And it really, really challenges them and really brings in that higher level thinking. So teaching this with point of view, I felt like was another great way to use it within the classroom. And it really got them thinking and got them started to, I think, take more ownership. And it really allowed them to have more understanding of what point of view actually was. Okay, so I hope that you guys enjoyed the five ways that I use stock images in the classroom. Be sure to follow the link down below in the description bar and to www.graphicstock.com forward slash holidays and get $50 off of this amazing, amazing deal. So you get unlimited pictures, vectors, illustrations, stock photos, everything that you can think of to be able to use it in your very own classroom. So follow the link down below. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe, shout it out, and I will talk to you guys really, really soon. Bye.